Well, good morning, sports fans. Larry Eater, Run, Blog, Run. This is your favorite program, Socialing the Distance. And today we have Joe Rafferty. He is the executive strategist at Oman Sale. Joe, great to see you. Hey, Larry. Great to see you again. It's been a long time. Yes. And uh, known Joe for a uh, since the early 2000s when he was working at Audi and then went to IMG and uh, then uh, uh, is at Oman Sale. And what we're talking about today is um, many of you don't even know where Oman is. So we're going to get Joe to explain a little bit about that and what Oman Sale is. But um, Oman Sale is going to be uh, the host of the World Race Walking Team Championships March 4th and 5th, 2022 in uh, Muscat, Oman. And then just about a month before that, the Muscat Marathon, February 11th and 12th. Uh, and Joe's the lucky man to be the race director um, for that marathon. So, man, you've got some stuff coming up, my friend. Yeah, absolutely. It's the way we like it. You know, it's uh, we've we've got a we've got a pretty, pretty pretty busy period here in the next kind of six to eight months in Oman. So, um, you know, with with the role that I have here, it's uh, it's across a multiple of sports. So we've got the T Twenty cricket at the moment. The World Cup is. Uh, we're hosting some of the pool games here in Muscat, and um, and then we're about to host uh, two Asian Championships and three World Championship sailing events uh, before before Christmas, and um, and then into the new year we'll we'll kind of renew our focus on uh, endurance sport with uh, the Muscat Marathon in in mid Feb, and then uh, we look forward to having our first World Athletics event in Oman uh, at the beginning of March with the the World Race Walking Team Championships. You just had a team from World Athletics, including Pierce Callahan, I believe, and I'm not. I think Jakob Larson was there. Was Jakob there too? He he didn't, he didn't make it. Um, you know, the, I guess you know the the new way of working in the world. Unfortunately, uh, we had some travel challenges with uh, with some of the delegations. So um, we had uh, in the end we had three people out of a delegation. Uh, I think of eight that were due to come. And uh, so, so we worked uh, Pierce and his team pretty hard for the two days that they were here. Um, you know, they, they wore many hats over those two days. But um, for us in Oman, it, it's a big step forward in terms of our, uh, you know, broadening our um, awareness within the international sports market and to have, uh, to be working with athletics as the, as the biggest Olympic sport. Uh, bringing a world championship here is, is huge for us. And we're very, very excited about hosting uh, the race walking championships in March. So, so you know, it was it, it, it was huge to have the guys here. Uh, you know, it all started to feel quite real. Uh, everything has been done via um, you know via, via virtual meetings like this over the over the past few months through the bid process. Um, you know, to when uh, when the president uh, Sebko made the announcement in Tokyo that we had won the bid, um, and you know that news when it when it happened in Tokyo went viral here in Oman very very quickly, and um, you know I think what what people who travel for that event in March are going to experience is a very very um, engaging and excited uh, nation for hosting sporting events. Well, tell us a little bit about Oman. Um, the uh, what I know of it is it is considered the Switzerland of the Middle East, and um, give us a little bit of location, a little bit about the country, and then I want to ask you about Oman Sale. Sure. So Oman is uh, on the southeast uh, corner of the Arabian Peninsula, so uh, just south of the Emirates, uh, just east of uh, of Yemen, um, and uh, and across the Sea of Oman uh, from Iran. So so that's where you're looking at us on the map. Um, the country itself is, um, I mean, you know, you describe it as the as the Switzerland of the Middle East, and you know, politically, the country stays very neutral. And uh, and as you know, as a very proud Irishman, I say this very honestly: the people of Oman are um, as welcoming and as hospitable as you're going to find anywhere in the world. So, um, you know. I think when people look at where we are on a map, they probably think, oh, you're just south of Dubai. You've probably got big skyscrapers and, you know, glass towers. And, um, you know, and then they look at the rest of the region and, and, and they probably think, yeah, okay, lots of desert. And, uh, you know, that, that's what a man is going to be. But actually, when you, when you kind of dig below the surface, you know, we have mountain ranges that, that go up to 3,000 meters um, at their peak, the Al-Hajjar mountain range, um, you know, 
two weeks ago, I took my kids to uh, to see some dolphins on the south coast and to see some turtles laying eggs and heading back out into the ocean. And uh, and then we do have you know everything that you'd expect from a modern international city or capital city here in Muscat. So um, Oman really can cater for pretty much uh, if if you're into an active lifestyle and an outdoor lifestyle. Um, I don't think you're going to find many places better than Oman to come and visit. So um, we've been out here now three years. Um, and even seeing the development and the desire for the country to host international sports events um, in that three-year period, it's grown so much. And, um, you know, like I said at the outset, you know, we've now got the T20 Cricket World Cup happening at the moment here in Muscat. Um, and, you know, we football is, is huge here, uh, absolutely huge. So the national team recently beat Japan um, in, uh, in one of their their World Cup qualifiers for for the Qatar World Cup next year. Um, sailing is a huge sport, which I'll, I'll touch on in a second with the work we do on a man sail. Um, and now we're starting to look at uh, you know look at athletics and endurance sports. So we've hosted um, uh, Oman by UTMB. We've had two editions of, of that event, which were incredible. Um, we've had we've got the Tour of Oman cycling event uh, each year, um, bringing some of the best cycling teams. Uh, from across the world to uh, to experience um you know not just the kind of fast flat circuits along uh, along the waterfront but equally like i said they go up into the al hajar mountains we have uh, jebel akhtar the green mountain which among cyclists is is gaining a really solid reputation as a must do climb um you know mm-hmm. alongside von Tu or or any of the great climbs in the european tours so we we as as a as a destination for sport We've got a, a, a hell of a lot to offer and, you know, we really look forward in the coming years to growing our reputation and welcoming more and more of the international sporting community to the Sultan. I, um, I was following uh, Pierce uh, Callahan's uh, um, uh, social media and he talked about um, how um, this is the first of, of uh, many, he hopes, uh, events in, uh, with World Athletics in Oman. Um, what I'm curious about is it's obvious that you guys are trying to tell the story of Oman. You're interested in these events. Um, why World Athletics? Well, look, I, I said it at the start of the interview, you know, World Athletics is, is still the biggest Olympic sport, so they don't come much bigger in the sporting world. And, and you know, then uh, the team and the Seb and John Ridgen have put together in, in Monaco over the last few years. And, um, and Oman, you know, taking, taking that and, and not putting it aside, but just park that for one second. The heritage of running in Oman and track and field, particularly, is is significant. You know, we've had runners back into the the kind of early to mid eighties. Um, you know, our four hundred meter national record holder uh, has run mid forty fours. Uh, you know, which which is even today will be competitive. And uh, you know, if, if you fast forward then to um, kind of around 2014, 2015, Barakat Al-Harthi, our 100 meter, uh, I guess, star, really. Um, uh, he ran sub 10 um, just before the, the Rio Games. And uh, and even in August of this year, you had Ali Al Belushi, who, who uh, you know, staked his claim for, for a future, um, you know, sprinting, uh, international reputation sprinting coming forth at the World Juniors in, uh, in Kenya. So um, athletics here, um, Really, you know, when when you when you go around the country here in Oman, you find people running uh, on the beaches every evening. You go into the mountains, you'll find them running on the trails. Um, and you know what you'll start to find is when you go to UTMB in Chamonix or you go to the London Marathon or New York, I, I'm pretty certain you're going to see an Omani flag. You know, so if you make yourself familiar with the Omani flag, you're going to start to recognise it in a lot of these races, right? Because you've probably seen it, you just don't know what it is. Um, and a lot of that goes back without, you know, giving you a full history lesson on the country. But, um, you know, the, the um, Oman ruled a lot of East Africa going back kind of two, three hundred years. So the links with Uganda, Tanzania, Southern Kenya um, are huge. So Zanzibar, for example, uh, you know, part of Tanzania used to be the capital of Oman. So um, those those links culturally um, for the sport of athletics are huge. There's still a lot of Omanis who travel back and forth between Dar es Salaam and Tanzania and, uh, and Muscat or Salala in the south. So um, 
there is a there is definitely a um, you know a genetic element to it. Okay, that, uh, that there are some very very talented runners in Oman. Um, so being able to host an event like the World Race Walking Team Championships and bringing delegations from World Athletics to Oman, all it's going to do is inspire more Omanis. Um, you know, to, to get into competitive athletics. So not just use it as a way to keep healthy and to keep fit, but actually let's start getting down the, the competitive route and, and let's start developing, you know, pathways of um, pathways of development across uh, different disciplines of the sport over the coming years. So, um, you know, it's really going to be, I think what, what March will do for us and, and when we host the World Race Walking Team Championships, I think it's going to be a huge um uh, it's going to be a huge fuel uh, to add to a you know an already passionate audience in the country, and um, that will really I think stimulate the the performance that you, the performances within um, our athletes that you're going to see in Asian Games in you know maybe 2022 comes a little bit early in China but you know as we look at Asian Games in 2026 and uh, and then we start moving through towards LA in 28 I think you're going to start to see more Omanis in in the athletic space um, and not just that. Asian Games Olympics, but you know for sure there's there's opportunities here to develop an endurance program across country with road running, and um, so that's you know that's our desire to work with World Athletics. It's not just about hosting the event, but it's what hosting that event can do for the sport of athletics in Oman over the next ten to fifteen years. Um, Oman, for kids who actually listened in history, was part of the spice uh, trade route and uh, dates back to the Middle Ages. And um, your, um, the adeptness in Oman at, at sailing is something that's been part of your, the tradition for a couple thousand years. Um, the first events that you got involved with, with Oman Sail, were putting on sailing events. Tell us a little bit about Oman Sail and how you're stepping out of that position in sailing and building. Yeah, so Oman Sail was founded uh, 12, uh, 12, 13 years ago, um, and it was done with the blessing of uh, His Majesty Sultan Qaboos, uh, who was the ruler of Oman for uh, for just over 50 years uh, before he passed away at the beginning of 2020. And as you rightly say, sailing was, well, is, not was, is a huge part of Omani culture. Um, and you know, it, you, I'm sure everybody knows Simbad the sailor, right? You know, we all we all know those stories, those those tales. And um, you know, when you dig into the the kind of background to that, and, and Simbad did a lot of sailing out of Muscat, so much of the old port here, where the spice trade, where where east and west met and traded, um, and that you can still go and walk walk the souk in Mutra, um, you know, where these guys would have would have traded um, you know, hundreds of years ago. So the, the history and the culture that exists here in Oman around, around sailing generally, and not, not just the sport, is, I mean, it's it's everywhere that you look, okay? Um, you know, you, you drive down the highways here and, and on many of the roundabouts, there are large dows, so the ships that, that are built and that have sailed um, in the Gulf region for thousands of years. And they're built in, in Sur in the south of Oman and Sahara in the north. So um, sailing is really woven into to the fabric of society here in Oman. So when when Sultan Qaboos, um, you know, gave his blessing to, to create Oman Sail, it was to bring a, a more modern view to, to sailing. So to make it relevant to, to the newer generation. And um, over that period of kind of 12 to 13 years, we've established four sailing schools across the country. Um, you know, we're we're coaching upwards of three to three and a half thousand Omani children in the sport of sailing every year. Um, and you know, and we've had we've had Omani sailors participate in um, you know in Asian championships. Um, we've had them compete in big offshore races like the Figaro in France. Recently in Italy in the Nastro Rosa tour, uh, which went on for a month, Oman came in second behind France. You know, a real powerhouse in sailing. And we ran, we ran them right to the last leg in uh, in Venice, um, you know. So it was it was pretty good going, um, and and you know our our teams are are now gaining a, a lot of respect in the sailing world, and you know, and and really from a standing start, uh, you know, thirteen years ago, to to be at that point where we're competitive against a nation like France in sailing is is not to be sniffed at. So, um, but I think 
what that comes back to is culturally here in Oman, um, the people uh, are, are not afraid of hard work. You know, they they want to achieve, they want to celebrate their culture, they want to show the world what Oman is capable of. So um, when we start to now um, use sailing as uh, an example of what's possible, we start to see the growth in other sports. So, um, you know, we're talking a lot here about, about athletics and track and field today, but, you know, there's also, if you look at the, the, uh, the growth of Omani swimming, we had our first swimmer in, in the Tokyo Games this year. Um, the, you know, um, the sport of cycling, we've got a lot of good cyclists coming through. Um, we've got some uh, some show jumpers uh, who have competed at Youth Olympics. An equestrian sport is big here, but giving them that focus on, on the competitive uh, side of equestrian sport, uh, we'll start to see them develop in the coming years. So. Um, so that's the background to Oman Sale and, you know, where we are today and, and, you know, where our role, where we see our role now is we've built a, you know, a business of, of almost 200 staff, um, which are, it's you know, 90, I think we're 96% uh, Omanized now. So, um, you know, this is not, it, for people who've worked in the region before, uh, their experience will be that, you know, they go to, to, to other countries in the Gulf and, and they deal largely with expatriates. OK, when you when you come to Oman and the team of World Athletics experienced this you know, two weeks ago when they came here, you know, they're dealing with Omanis. So they're dealing with people who who really are passionate about um, putting their best foot forward for the nation. Um, and we've built a very experienced team. You know, our, our team within Oman Sale, from an event perspective, have delivered America's Cup World Series. We've developed or we've de uh, delivered three world championship sailing events, uh, numerous Asian uh, and Gulf championships. And so we've built a reputation within the country of, of delivering international sporting properties. And, and now what we want to do is, is take that experience and that know-how and make sure the nation as a whole benefits from it. So we're working hand in hand with the Oman Athletic Association in, in the delivery of, uh, of the World Race Walking Team Championships. And, you know, part of that is, is a huge development program of officials, of coaches, of athletes, so that there is, you know, I, I know around event hosting, everybody talks about legacy, okay? And, and you know, there, there's always a debate, right, after a championship, really, what is the legacy? And what we want to do is make sure that that legacy is, is developed through people. We want to make sure that hosting um, the race walking in March leaves behind um, you know, not just a, an economic or a social, uh, you know, a social impact, but that the people within the sport of track and field and, and race walking and, and road running and, and all those things, that we use the time we have working with World Athletics over the coming months to develop those people and, and leave a long lasting legacy in the country for the sport. Mm -hmm. The um, How many teams are you expecting for the World Race Walking Team Championships? Good question. Um, and uh, you know, the, the meeting that we had with the team last week, they, they've taken us through the, the data from previous editions of the event. Um, I think we, we're we in a relatively unique position where, um, you know, coming out of the pandemic, we are, uh, you know, the country have done a great job in, in uh, driving a high percentage of vaccination. So we're up over 92% of the nation are vaccinated now here, here in Oman. And, you know, we, we've reopened our borders, um, you know, as long as people are fully vaccinated and have a negative test, there's no quarantine, you know, you can come and uh, you can come and visit. So, um, you know, we're compared to many countries, um, we're, we're open, you know, we're, we're ready to receive people. Um, what we are seeing, so we'll host in December, we'll, we'll host the uh, World Youth Sailing Championships so in track and field, similar to what happened in, uh, in Nairobi in August. And, and our entries have, have far exceeded expectations of world sailing. Um, so, you know, if that trend continues for race walking, we're hopeful that we're going to see, um, you know, upwards of 600 athletes um, before we get into coaches, officials, media. So, you know, we, we have a target here to, to get over a thousand international guests coming into Oman. Um, and certainly from... You know, from everything that, that we're doing with World Athletics now, we're confident that that's a, a realistic goal and ambition. The um, are you, I understand you're going to put on a Masters event too that coincides with the uh, the World uh, Race Walking Team Championships. Tell us a little bit about that. 
Yeah, so we're we're just finalising the schedule at the moment um, with World Athletics. So you know we'll have our uh, our junior distance, our under twenty distance. Um, we'll have the twenty k, and, and then we're working on that longer distance. Um, you know, obviously that's a, an event that's a little bit in flux at the moment uh, following the Tokyo Games. So World Athletics will guide us on that, um, and and uh, in addition to to hosting those three. Uh, kind of mainstays of, of the World Race Walking Team Championships. We'll have uh, Masters events that we will stage and we're also going to add the Parkrun World Festival to our uh, calendar of, of, of activity over that weekend in March. Um, what we want to do is you know, attract people into Oman is, is obviously a huge goal for us from a tourism perspective. And, and I think that's where that's where those Masters races will, will, um, will do a great job for us. And um, we're putting together packages that will allow people to see a little bit more of a man than just Muscat. So, um, you know, we're from Muscat to go up into the Al Hajar Mountains is about a 90 minute drive. So it's it's pretty accessible. It's pretty easy for people to go and experience. Um, on the master side, if they want to come for, for a week or, you know, a long weekend, we, we can build activities in for them around um, their trip here. Um, we're also working with a number of federations that have been in touch with us about coming out here to do uh, pre-event camps. So uh, whether that's at sea level, warm weather, but we've had one or two inquire about altitude camps. So, um, which is you know something that's in our plan, and we've just had to pull that forward by a couple of years. So, um, so I think that you know that the our approach to it is um, we want to we want to make. Um, the event as successful as possible, but we want to showcase as much of our man as we possibly can. So talking about the uh, the the high altitude opportunities, obviously, uh, was it Mount uh, Fount Saint Rameau, um, where yeah. like Mo is gone, and, and uh, several of the Brits go to, and a lot of the Europeans is about twenty five fifty. You guys are up over three thousand, so you've got. Is there? Um, hotels there and things like that or is this going to be something that's going to be built over time yeah it's it is being built over time so if we'd had this conversation three years ago um you know there were definitely hotels there but there weren't there wasn't much else okay yeah um, so what we've been doing with the hosting of uh, oman by utmb we've built a lot of running trails up there uh, so, okay. so particularly on jebel Akhtar. so there's two main mountains here two main peaks you have Jebel Akhtar that comes out about 2,700 meters and Jebel Shams at, uh, at 3,000. Now, there's a, a plateau uh, on Jebel Akhtar, about 2,600, give or take. Um, and, you know, there's about 40 to 50K of, of good trails there that, uh, that endurance runners will love. Um, we're, they're, they're in the countries, we're in the process of, of building a, a 400 meter track there. Uh, so it's not quite ready yet, but when that is ready, um, and we, we add that to the trails that are part of the legacy of hosting UTMB. Um, we've also got a number of hotels from, you know, an Alila, you know, luxury five-star resort uh, to we've got Anatara property. We've got uh, recently opened in the last couple of months, uh, Doucet Hotel, which is a mix of self-catering accommodation and hotel accommodation. Um, that is kind of high three-star, I think, possibly a four star, I need to double check that, but it, it gives options to, to teams, to countries, to individuals who, who would like to come here and train at altitude. So, you know, that hotel is only open in the last kind of three to four months. So, um, we're, we're on a journey. We're in the early, early stages of it. Um, and we are now ready to start hosting certain groups of people. Um, and when the track is built that, uh, potential to host, um, you know, full international teams. So if, uh, you know, if a if a European nation wants to come here um, to train at altitude or to train in warm weather, um, we will have those facilities in in uh, a not so distant future. Now you don't get much cool weather up in the mountains, do you? Do you? You guys don't have snow, or do you up there or not? <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, you would think not, but. Uh, I, I have to say, it took my breath away when I saw snow on the mountaintops in Oman. Um, oh, that's cool! That would be gorgeous. Uh, yeah, no, it's it's. Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, I, I live in Wisconsin part of the year, so I'm around it a lot. But I was just very curious. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong, we don't, we don't get the kind of snow you see, Larry. But um, yeah. you know, before UTMB and uh, Oman by UTMB in 2019, 
uh, we were doing our kind of final course checks about two to three weeks out from the event and uh, and for our 150k distance uh, at the top of Jebel Shams our route team were up there building and, and they were delayed by three days because of snow um, wow. you know, now look for you you'd look at it and you say it's a sprinkling on the ground but uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, no with if you're not prepared for it it's uh you know, I, I lived in Wilmington, Delaware for a while, and they'd get two inches of snow, and the entire city would be shut down, you know? So, yeah. Uh, so, 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 in terms of kind of temperature and weather, you know, like today we, we've got a beautiful day. So, we're, we're, uh, we're coming into November. It was uh, 30 degrees um, Celsius today here uh, in Moscow with a nice cool breeze. It was a really beautiful day. Um, when you travel up into the mountains so around Jebel Akhtar, where I'm talking about, the temperature can drop by about 10 to 12 degrees. So, you know, in the winter months, uh, as we get into kind of late November into December, the weather here in Moscow will be mid twenties, and it's and it's beautiful, right? And that's that's absolutely stunning weather. Um, you're in the mid teens then when you go up to Jabal Akhtar. So, when teams want to come here to train uh, at altitude uh, in the winter months, for sure, it's going to be better than most European countries, um, you know, that are experiencing a, a, some of them quite a harsh winter. Um, but at the same time, it's not going to be oppressive for them to to be able to train and you know and and, uh, and put some solid mileage in on the mountains. You've got. We were just talking about the Muscat Marathon as well. That's coming up February 11th and 12th, and you were the lucky man to be the race director. Um, tell us a little bit about that event. How long has it been going? What have the numbers been like? Yeah, so um, the, the marathon itself was established by the Muscat Roadrunners, which is uh, you know like a, a community running group. So um, you know they, they those guys are out. So my wife did a ten k with them this morning, um, and you know there's this kind of 100, 150 really active members, and and they're a super group to go and join. And I think like a lot of um, marathons in in the Gulf region, they started kind of around golf courses. You know that that they did laps of golf courses and. In the last six years, that event has gone from just under a thousand people to uh, we February 2020, just before the world started to close down. Um, we had 11,000 participants uh, across the distances of the, of the event. So, you know, as a as a development uh, marathon, which is very much where we're at in terms of our within the international kind of road running scene, um, we have multiple distances. We've got a marathon, a half marathon and a 10K on the Friday. Um, so our weekend is Friday and Saturday uh, here in Oman. And then on the Saturday, we have a 5K and then we've got a, a 1K, a 2K, and a 3K for, for school children. Um, and we've seen the event grow overall uh, to 11,000 participants, which is is a huge growth in, in that kind of six-year period. Um, what we're really excited about from 2020 was the growth of particularly the 10K and the half marathon. So, uh, you know, we went uh, in, in excess of 2,000 runners um, in the uh, in the 10K and, uh, and over 1,000 for the first time in the half marathon. So our marathon's still a little bit light, so we get about between three and 400 participants. Um, but it is definitely on the right pathway for growth. Um, and what we're seeing is people are coming back year on year and stepping up a distance from, you know, they did 5K two years ago, they did 10K last year, and now they're stepping up into the half marathon or, you know, the 10 to the half to the full. So um, what we have as an event is uh, we've got a very fast, very flat course. Um, and I think the, um, you know, the, the the course records, when you look at them, or the race records, um, don't do the don't do the course justice. And uh, in 2020, we started working with uh, Matthew Turnbull, um, who I'm sure you know. Well, I know you know. Um, and you know, Matt puts together some of the some of the best elite fields in in road running, right? And uh, so, you know, Matt Matt is working with us now, and, and I think for the event in in February next year, we're very excited about uh, what's possible um, in terms of the times that people can run here because we're very confident that. And the course is capable of far faster than, than what we've seen historically. Um, the the event itself is, um, I I think is is probably um, the most exciting and the most interesting sporting event within the the, the annual calendar here in Oman, um, for, for a whole number of reasons. Right, uh, uh, mass participation running events are are fantastic, no matter where you are in the world. I, I talked earlier about how passionate Omanis are about sport, um, and the marathon here has 
has a huge uh, percentage of Omani participants. Okay, so um, you know if you if you look back, um, if you get a chance to to have a look at the uh, the five k race from our twenty twenty marathon, so um, we we created red t shirts that carried the Omani flag and, uh, and and the Omani participation in that was it was. 98, 99% of, of the 3,000 that came out that day were on Manage, okay? Um, and when we when we look at the splits or 11,000 participants that year, we had 1,000 from overseas. Um, and of the 10,000 who were residents of Oman, uh, over 9,000 are Omani, okay? So so it's about 1,000 expatriate residents of Oman and, and the rest are Omani. And, uh, you know, that, again, it kind of books the trend of what you probably see in, in, in other uh, Gulf states. So um, what you get is, is a, when you come to race here, if you come from overseas to Oman for the Muscat Marathon, what you will get is an incredibly uh, local experience. Okay, so, um, and, and that's why I think the event has a, has a very, very exciting future. Just uh, to interject, um, I've worked at some of the golf events from Dubai to RAK and up into also uh, uh, Doha. And if you get more than three or four percent in local participation in those events, uh, you're quite lucky. I think the folks in Dubai are up around 10. So huge difference. Uh, and that that really, I think, speaks to the the health of um interest in endurance sports. And we've talked, uh, we chatted earlier about the goal for, I think it was a 2032 um, or 2040 that what you, what you're trying to do in, um, in Oman is really encourage people to be fit and to really buy into endurance events and uh, putting on some local events like that and putting on the, the park run festival that you're going to do with the race walk sounds pretty cool as well. I met the a founder of Park Run a few years ago with David Bedford at, in London, and uh, wow, what a what an evangelist! You know, uh, totally totally into it. And uh, yeah, uh, and, and you know what? I think um, you know what what we're seeing here in Oman. Uh, you know, exactly what you've described. You've seen in, in Dubai and some of the other. Um, events around the region and um, what we're seeing is more and more people actively running every day um which which is not always the norm in this part of the world um i think it's it's pretty widely known about some of the, the potential health issues uh, that are prevalent in this region particularly type 2 diabetes and how important that exercise can be um, in, in fighting diseases like that so um that's you know for us on a day-to-day -day basis you know seeing people in, in the country out running on a daily basis is hugely encouraging. Um, you mentioned about our vision 2040, which is the government's development plan for the nation. Uh, you know, the economic side is, is to get away from or, or start to diversify out of uh, fossil fuels and oil and gas, which, you know, is, has been a huge funder of, of the nation's development. Um, but when you actually go and look at Oman's vision 2040 document, the I would say, you know, it is matched in terms of the economic with the with the social development. And what I mean by that is everything here is centered around the development of Omani skill set. So, you know, it's it's not about bringing in hordes of expatriates to deliver a vision for the country. They want Omanis to deliver the future of this nation and, and are very much on track to do so. Um, and, you know, within my team, for example, you know, that will deliver the, the World Race Walking Team Championships that will help deliver the, the Muscat Marathon in February. And, um, you know, I'm the only non omani in the team. Um, and, you know, I'm sitting here talking to you this evening while my team are an hour north of here delivering our in, in the process of starting uh, an Asian Championship sailing event, so um, you know they're very, very capable uh, group of people, and uh, you know they have a, a phenomenal work ethic and a desire to succeed. Um, so, you know, it, with that Vision Twenty Forty in mind, uh, the development of the people here is, is crucial, um, and you know they see event hosting uh, to help stimulate the sports tourism market here. Uh, as, a, as a core part of that growth. So um, it's very exciting to see the growth of participants in the marathon. Um, 
you know, we said at the outset, working with the largest Olympic sport with Hull Athletics is, is hugely encouraging for the country. We've built a fantastic relationship with World Sailing, um, you know, and, and there are a number of other sports. So we've now got an Omani vice president of FINA, and I'm sure that's going to develop, uh, you know, swimming in Oman considerably over the coming year. You're, um, um, I'm fascinated with what you're doing. And when we post this socialing the distance in the next couple of weeks, I'll be asking you for some links for people to learn a little bit more about Oman, about tourism in Oman, about Oman sale, because um, our readership is global. And uh, on a typical one of these, we get about 100,000 folks to, to check it out. Um, what do you want, knowing that our, our viewership is, uh, they like to travel, um, a lot of them compete. Uh, we've got a strong race walking contingent. When I don't write about race walking in a world championship, I get hate mail. And so I always put in stories about um, all the, the um, gentleman who um, wrote um, Frankenstein um, was involved in race walking and, and very, a lot of famous people have been involved in race walking. And it's a, it's a, it's a crazy uh, uh, challenging uh, event and um, you know it's the VO2 max is equivalent to cross country skiers and I mean in in so it's a, it's fascinating to see I love the history of it um, and I think that um, um, I think it's a it's a great event for you guys to start with coming into uh, bringing it into Oman yeah and I, and I think Larry you know what what do we want from it um, we want people to come here and experience Oman. OK, um, that's what we want, because what we have great confidence in um, is that when people come to Oman once, they'll come again. Uh, and we are supremely confident of that. Um, and, you know, since I've come here, I've had friends and family come to visit. And you know, they're all they come here and they're surprised by what they experience in a really positive sense, okay? So, uh, like we were talking earlier, you asked me about where Oman is on the map, and, and you know, people make uh, assumptions based on, on looking at, a, at an atlas or on Google Earth, right? Uh, and then they come here and they say, oh, it's not at all what I expected. And, uh, and actually what they find is that they spend a week, two weeks here, and, and they turn around and say, God, I wish I had another two weeks because I'm only scratching the surface of the country. So. Um, we just want people to come and experience it. And we're very, very confident that we will create an experience in March for the for the race walking community that will be in a really positive way, very different maybe to, to some of the experiences they've had before. Um, and we are, again, like I said, we're very, very confident that the experience they will have here um, will we'll send them back to their home countries and, and, and be advocates for Oman. So, you know, my, my benchmark for success of, in the hosting of this event, you know, the technical side, we, we kind of know what the benchmark for success is there, okay? But, but for me, um, in my role here in Oman, what I want is people to go back to the US and, and they meet you and they say, hey, Larry, we went to Oman and, and we did the World Race Walking Championships and, and, you know, we did this and went to Nizwa in the interior we saw the traditional souk and, you know, we, we went offshore and we saw the whale sharks, the dolphins, and we went to the opera house and we did all these things. And, you know, five minutes into the conversation, you say, yeah, but how did your race go? And they say, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, I came, you know, I came 25th or I beat my people or whatever, right? You know, that, the benchmark for me of success in, in the hosting of this event is that um, – we we showcase the country in such a way that that becomes the stories that people tell when they return to their home countries. That's cool. No, I I, I think that's a, a very um, honest uh, assessment, and uh, um, I'm looking forward to learning more about it and uh, to seeing you over there uh, down the road. And and thanks for your time today. Um, it's uh, I'm going to kind of finish this up and then, you know, you and I will follow up in a, in a few minutes. But uh, uh, this is Larry Eater with Run Blog Run. This is our program, Social in the Distance. We feature Joe Rafferty, the executive strategist of Oman Sale. And today we were discussing the upcoming World Race Walking Team Championships in Muscat, Oman, March 4th and 5th in 2022. And we'll have information up about that shortly. 
and also the Muscat Marathon, February 11th and 12th uh, in 2022, where Joe is the new race director. And he, you know, that smile on his face just belies the work our friend is going to have in front of him. But, uh, you know, it'll be for some good stories and perhaps a point we can, uh, we can tell a few stories. We've, we've done that before, my friend. So thank you again. Uh, my pleasure, Larry. Thanks for having me. Cheers. Well, hello, sports fans. Larry Eater, Run, Blog, Run. This is Socialing the Distance, your favorite podcast, of course. Um, and today we had a really interesting one. Uh, we interviewed the executive strategist for Oman Sale, Joe Rafferty, and about the World uh, Team Championships in race walking, which will be happening March uh, 4th and 5th in Muscat, Oman. And then also about the Muscat Marathon, which will be happening February 11th and 12th, uh, 2022. Um, it's, that's been around for nearly a decade. And um, Oman is considered the Switzerland of the Middle East. And most people have no clue where it's at. But if you go back to your history books, um, it was Muscat was the center of the spice trade in the Middle Ages, in the Renaissance. And uh, it continues to have an incredible history in sailing. Um, Oman Sail is an organization started about uh, 10 or 12 years ago. And uh, they have, uh, they're developing three to 4,000 young sailors a year through their sailing school. And they're very, very competitive, taking second to France in the junior championships recently. Um, it's a big tradition in Oman, but they're expanding into um, endurance sports. Joe Rafferty, who is one of the few non-Omanis working um, in Oman sale, um, is, uh, I met him when he was at Adidas. And uh, then he went to IMG. He's been putting on events most of his adult life. And the race walking team championships that um, Oman will be hosting, uh, that was announced during the Tokyo uh, Olympics by uh, President Seb Co. And they just had a visit with uh, Pierce Callahan uh, of the uh, opportunities where to put courses and all those kind of fun things for the uh, race walks. And there will be obviously the elite team championships, but there will also be junior event. There will also be master's event. And why is Oman doing this? They want to bring people to the country. Um, they have, uh, they're very popular with people, uh, with travelers from France, from um, UK and Germany, um, and Italy, Spain and Russia, and they're looking to expand into the Chinese market, and they're fascinated with um, bringing U.S. travelers over. Uh, the challenge is, is you can't fly directly into Muscat, you either go into Dubai or you go into Doha, and then it's about 50 minutes from Doha and about 30 minutes from uh, uh, from Dubai. Uh, but it's um, they're patient and they're trying to build things up. The marathon's fascinating to me. It's about 12,000 people for the 5K, 10K, half marathon and marathon. The marathon's probably under uh, 1,000. But over 98% of the people in the 5K, that's 3,000 people, um, are Omani citizens. Um, and about 90%, more than 90% of all 12,000 runners are from Oman as well. And I think that's pretty cool. It's a little different than some of the uh, other Gulf states that I visited where they're trying to get more locals to get involved. Um, in Oman, they have a, a program called 2040, uh, Goal 2040, where they're trying to get people fitter and they're trying to also move from the uh, um, the um, fuel, they've, they've, they've made their money and they've built the country off natural gas and oil and um, other carbon fuels, and they're trying to move away from that. So how do they do that? Bringing in tourism. And so they've got everything from 3,000 meter mountains where there's uh, places to train and even a little bit of snow. Uh, to great beaches, and um, they've got great history there too. And people seem to really enjoy the travel, and they're very surprised at what they find. So we're hoping to get over there, give you guys a little bit of um, uh, a feel and a taste for 
uh, Oman and Muscat. And, um, but I think that this is a nice start to learn a little bit about the country, to, to see from a race director and an event strategist viewpoint on what's important um, uh, in, in building events. Because uh, this last week, Piers Callahan from World Athletics said this is going to be the first of many events in Oman. Why is World Athletics so confident that they can put events on? Um, they must be doing something right. And so I'm fascinated with that. And it's that whole global village thing, too. We want to learn more about countries. And this would be country 73 for me. So uh, looking forward to learning more about Oman and Oman sale. And thanks to Joe Rafferty today. Yeah, with them on sale. And thanks to Mike Deering, our production manager, putting together Social in the Distance. Stay safe.